Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I will, I will be showing you how to change a couple things in Halo 3 from weapons, vehicles, characters, and squads. So let's get right into it. So first, I'm going to show you by choosing a map. So in this map, I'm going to choose the base map. And this map will be the Crow's Nest. And to start with this, you'll have to find the, uh, what is it? You'll have to find scenario. So I'm going to let you know about this first. Before you do anything, if you want to do anything with weapons, vehicles, or characters, you need scenario. Anything with squads as well, you need to find the scenario tag. S-C-N-R. Remember that tag. Then click on here, right here, and then... It's okay. Then after that, you type in the certain thing you need to find. You'll like, let's say you're looking for weapons. You'll go just type in weapon, and you'll find weapon palette. It's basically the same thing with characters or vehicles. Just type in character or vehicle, and click on the so and so palette, and then an entire or list of weapons will come up. And I've already filled out the entire palette, so I'm not going to show you all that. So, basically, basically what I did here is you can be able to adjust the palettes here whenever you want. So, right here is something you would call an element. You can be able to add as many as you want with this gear right here by choosing the add or remove elements click on that and you can be able to add as many as you want you can go up to multiple as you uh you could possibly even go up to 100 i wouldn't go up that high unless you want i don't really know how high you could be able to go without having your game be glitching with the amount of weapons you put in there i've never tried putting in a ton of guns but I normally just keep it with the vanilla game guns, but I normally try putting in certain cut weapons and maybe some, uh, maybe some custom weapons I've made in Forge. But let me show you the character and vehicle. So just type in character, and then uh, oh, I spelled it wrong. Whoops. Okay, character palette. And it's basically the same thing. And you'll be able to find everything in here. And you'll be able to add in new characters as well as soon as you import anything. Like, you can go to different maps and get a character AI. And if you want to find character AI, you have to go to the character tag. And you'll go through here and just right click and extract. And then you'll had to name the file name and then you're you're golden and basically vehicles are the same thing so i won't have to go that far into detail about vehicles so really quickly before i go into squads weapons you're gonna need to do something really quickly with weapons if you want your uh characters like the character ai to fire them so let's go to ai generic weapon properties and uh where is it web weapon property weapon properties uh, should be here let me try this uh, oh there it is okay so here we go weapon properties all right so the weapon properties are basically all the uh what would you say uh i don't know what you would describe it as they would be all the ranges, the fire rates, everything that a weapon would use that an AI would be using to fire or use the weapon for. So let's say the um, the SMG. So this thing isn't going to be having that much range. So AIs aren't going to be firing at a... <laughs> isn't going to be firing at very far of a distance like a sniper. So this thing is not is going to uh, have a very small range. So the maximum firing range will be at 14. And the minimum will be 0. 0.5. So 
Yeah, just fill the stuff out as much as you want, and also firing patterns is also important. Fill that out, and that is also important. You, both of these things are as important as putting them into the weapon palette. All three of those things need to be put in with the weapon you want to put in. One of those things not being put in, and the weapon won't work. So, let's go back to the scenario, and... Let's get back to why you click on this video. <laughs> Squads. So, I also should give you a tip. If you're going to adjust uh, squads, I would suggest writing down the numbers of the pallets. Like, let's say the weapon pallets. I would suggest writing down all the elements in the pallets. Like, the SMG is element 0. Battle rifle is element 1. Spiker is element 2. Well, not anymore because I changed that. But you get my point. So, what you're going to do here is this. Choose a squad. And you can, and basically, you're going to... If you want to just basically just choose one character just to make it quick, you could go to base squad and change the character type index and change it to... Any new character elements in the character or palette. So right here, I changed it to number two, which would be the brute. And I also gave them uh, what is that one? That is the carbine and also plasma pistols. But if you want to be more specific, uh, you can go to starting locations, which gets a little bit more complicated. You'll need I can. I'm not exactly that good with X, Y, and Z positioning, so I usually do with a different tool. So I'll show you that in just a second. Actually, I'll start pulling that up right now while I show you that. Okay, give me one second. Uh, okay, so with this, it's basically as you are able to pull up the with the starting locations. Starting locations are basically a more specifically, uh, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but it's more specific base squad. It's more of a specific base squad, basically. So let's say I want to have two different character types. So I could put a brute here for a first starting location, and I could put a brute captain here. So... I then, I will put different weapon. I could put two, two different weapons here, and then I could easily just save, because I already did this, and there, it's saved. But that's not all I want to show you. I'm going to show you how I feel I'm able to put starting locations. In, in case you want to fill out your own starting locations and add new AIs or something. So, what I normally do is I open up a tool called Reclaimer. This tool is actually really useful. It's basically assembly, but it doesn't have the same... It's basically like assembly, but it has some some of the features taken out because some of the features won't work in this tool. I guess. I don't really know how to explain it, but... This tool actually can be able to view the map. <laughs> That's why I actually use this a lot. So let me find the squad because it's, um, let me see if I can find the squad. Uh, because what I use this thing for is that they can be able to, it makes it a whole lot easier to be able to make changes to your, to the map. like. You can be able to use this and change the squad locations and all that. You can be able to change the scenery. Well, I don't know that much about the scenery, but you can be able to change around the AI location spawn points. You can be able to change around uh, objects, certain objects to an extent. But it just depends on what is there. It... It just depends what you can be able to change. I haven't exactly experimented what you can ex change. I've mostly been changing around the spawns of stuff. So, let me show you what I'm talking about. So, 
you see these two markers right here. If I can be able to get them straight. Let me just slow down the speed. You see these two markers right here? So, originally, they would be spawning two marines. But these two, I changed to brutes, to a brute and a brute captain. So, I could be able to move this right here. And as soon as I moved it to where I want to, save it right here. Save the changes. So, now that we got all the changes that we got, we're going to hop into MCC and show you what it does. Granted, if you have a uh, AI, like a brute, in a campaign, if you're hoping for it to follow you like a marine, expect it not to follow you. <laughs> I learned that the hard, hard way. So, that's all I'm going to say about that. Let me just pull up my MCC. I'll be right back. Okay, so we got this pulled up. Let's go right into the map. And let's start it. Okay, so I turned down the music, so just in case. Uh, I turned on all the music in MCC in case so uh, you don't have to worry about not hearing me. I'm not sure how loud it was in, in case you wouldn't be able to hear me. So, just in case, uh, let, me know, let me just tell you about this just really quickly. So, when you first load up the game, there's a possibility that certain AIs, when you put them in, like let's say you put in a brute in the place of a marine, there's a possibility that a brute won't pop up at first. So I would say there is a way to be able to fix that. It's actually pretty easy. And it's actually the same way that you would extract the files for getting the AI or weapon or anything from that map. So. You just need to right click on the AI that you were trying to get or right click on the file or a tag that you're trying to do or like basically right click on the AI, like right click on the character tag and basically just find the thing called force load and just click on that and it'll just force load it into the game. It'll work. It works every time that I've done it. It's an easy fix. It works for me and it should work for you. It will be really easy but let's just see if this works okay let's get to it oh and it worked brute captain major and brute minor there we go <laughs> i want to see i kind of want to see what a brute it looks like with a battle rifle <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but it looks weird to me. <laughs> a brute carrying a human weapon looks weird to me. But that'll have to do for it to, for this video. I'll, I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you later.